Hey, this is Matt with Central Oregon Truck Company, and today we're going to teach you how to tarp a load like a pro. We got Jesse here to help us out, and by the end of this video, you're going to learn how to shave time off tarping your load. We are working on getting some tarps set up. The first step of the process for us for tarping is to make sure that our tarps are ready to be deployed. The first step is going to be getting all of our rope attached to the tarps so that when we fold them up and roll them and put them on top of the load, we know that everything is good to go. So this is the tongue or the front flap of the tarp or the rear flap, depending on which way the tarp is going. But what we do is we take the first D-ring closest to the tarp itself and we'll tie on a line. What I like to do is tie a bowline knot for my fixed lines. And the reason for that is that with a bowline you have this loose end that never tightens. So then no matter how hard I pull on this line, I'll always be able to untie it. So that's how I like to get those set up. So we'll do one on the other side as well. What I'm gonna do is go through the first D-ring closest to the tarp tie a bowline knot and then throw the excess to the center of the tarp. At the back, a similar process. We're going to tie fixed lines for the back of the tarp too. The way our tarps are set up, we have a seam that is going to be just over the edge on an eight foot wide load. So you've got on each side, a seam that rides about that edge. You can move these fixed lines up or down depending on the shape or the height of your load. I like to start with the D-ring to the outside of this first line here is where I like to set them up to begin with. I've got the seam that's gonna be at the edge of the load on top and that's where I'm gonna tie this fixed line as close to that as possible. Now the beauty is if you tie a good knot that is easy to untie, you can move it whichever direction you need when you're tarping, which is why I advocate the bowlin because it's easy to tie and it's easy to untie. So the next step is going to be setting up the rope that we use for the sides. Um, to set these up in the tarp, we'll place them through the D-rings all the way down the length of the tarp. When we're doing this, one thing that we want to keep in mind is that as we're putting them through the D-rings that we just make sure that we're putting them through the same direction each time. That way when we go to use them as we're tarping, we get an even pull and we don't bind up our rope. This side of the tarp is the one that has the flaps that we close in. I like to make a quick, just a quick release knot on this front D-ring and then pull all of my excess to that end of the tarp. Uh, I find it works better as we're tarping when we do it that way. So I'm going to do the rest of these uh, lengths of rope the same way that I did that first one. We have three more to do on this tarp the same way. So now that we've got all of our rope affixed to the tarp and run through the D-rings, um, we're going to fold and roll this tarp up. I'm going to show how we do it in thirds. I know that half is something that is done a lot, but thirds tends to work pretty good for irregular size loads and you also will be centered on the load each time. So I'll show you how to do that now. So our first step is to fold in our flaps, our two side flaps and our middle one. Just flick them over like that. And then I'm pulling this middle one in and I wanna just make sure to get it nice and straight so it folds up evenly. Mm -hmm. 
Where we have our weather seals, where these flaps meet, I like to start by folding those underneath. It'll make the rolling process go a little bit easier. They won't be sticking out then. So our first step, we're gonna take one corner and I fold it right up to the seam of this middle flap, just like so. Take a second or two just to make sure that I've got a good crease on this side. I'll take the opposite corner and I'll come and meet that fold line on this side. Now we've got all kinds of wrinkle over here. I just give it a quick couple of tugs, try to straighten it out as I go along. We've got one more billow on this side. Give it a quick tug straighten it out. Now I'll take my opposite corner and this opposite corner I'll fold to the very end. Just like that and then again I'm going to take the corner on the other side of the tarp and make the same move. And then I'll tug it from the sides to even it out. I've got this mess in the middle here. And so if I just take this corner and pull straight back, it'll take it out. Now you can see the back of your seams the stitch lines, I'll take one corner and I'll fold it to the furthest seam. And then repeat it on the other side. And now I've got a fold over in the middle. I can come and Pull on that a little bit and then pull from the corner to straighten it out. And now for my last fold, I'm simply going to take this corner and go to the end of the tarp. If you've got wind or you just need a little bit of help getting a good pullover, you can put your toe on the inward corner of your first fold. Give it a yank. And then now we'll match it up with the other side. Now to shorten up the roll, what I like to do is bring the very end and fold it inwards. I use the color change on our tarps as a reference point. I'll just fold it right up to where that green starts. And now I'll fold the front of this a little bit forward like so. And that will allow me to get my bungees underneath there so I can fold on top of that. Just like that. And then I'll start from this folded end and roll towards that end. The trick is to get as tight a roll as you can to start. That'll help them come out being tighter on the other end. Then once you're done, you can bring the ends of your bungee cords together and you've got a folded tarp. Now we'll repeat that process with the second tarp. All right, we're gonna get this load tarped up here. We've got both our tarps laid up here to the front. I need to move one to the back and then I'm gonna roll the back one out first and then the front one. All right, so now we're at the back. I'm gonna undo my bungees. Roll 
for it a little bit. These we'll use for the flop. I'm gonna keep track of them, but throw them off to the side here for a minute. I wanna line the seam of my tarp up as close to the back as possible. Give it a tug forward there. I'm gonna leave a little bit off the front and then I can pull back on the tarp as necessary when we need to make adjustments. This one's kind of unique because we've got this big step up, but if you can get the front started on the top, you should be able to pull the rest of the way. Now we'll start unfolding. I'm gonna get this bottom section kind of started so I can do the rest from the top. So I don't have to keep climbing up and down. I'm gonna make sure that all of my rope is thrown down so I can reach it from the bottom. And now that I've got it all laid out, I'm gonna come back down here and put my tongue, put that down. And then I've got it set up now to where I can come back down and make adjustments to get it squared up. Now that I'm back down on the ground, we want to square up the back of this load. I'm going to start just giving it a little bit of a pull forward like there as we start to get this corner set up. Got this top seam coming down. I'll use that as a reference to square me up, pull forward until I see that seam on both sides like that. And now that I have that marked out for level, we can tack up this flap and that will allow us to square the back of the tarp. I'm going to take these bungees that I threw aside and just use them to temporarily give myself some space here. Now, obviously, the back of this load is much shorter than the rest of the load, which creates a little bit of a challenge, but we can overcome it by doing a little bit of folding. I measure out to see which D-ring needs to be the bottom, and then I create a fold from there. And then I can count D-rings up to figure out where I need to space it. I'm gonna go back to my first tarp hook, go through the rub rail, and then come back with the end of the rope. And now that I've got my spacing identified, I'm gonna go through both the D-rings and then I'll make a quick release knot here and just hold that tension while I get the other side taken care of. Just like we did on the other side, I'm identifying where my bottom is, this D-ring and then I'm doubling up up here so I know where to put my string through. I'm gonna come back to my first tarp hook, make a loop for myself, go through the rub rail, give myself some tension. And then with the end of the rope, I'm going through both of these D-rings that I set up before. And now that I've got my other side tacked down, I can go ahead and pull this a little bit tight. Make another loop, go into my next tarp hook, and then I can grab these two D-rings, pull them tight again. Come back to the tarp hook, and then my last bottom one here, this is nice that we have a little bit of excess because now we can pull this under the load and protect it from underneath. Then what I'll do is make myself a quick release knot and then pull it tight to this tarp hook. 
Now I've got this excess, I like to just roll it up and then I can push it underneath the load if you've got a load that's rised. So that'll stay there. And now we just finish up the other side the same way. And now we get ready for putting up our sides. The first thing I need to do is since this back end is so low, I need to give myself a little bit of space with that line of string there. So when I fold up my side, what I like to do is uh, measure against the edge of the trailer, the rub rail, with one hand, and then the other I can fold up underneath, get my rough measurement that way, and then kind of adjust it as I go along. Obviously, when you have this much excess, it's a little bit more tricky, but then I can grab a couple of those D-rings and tack it up to where I can reach it from the other side. And then I can repeat it on this side as well. Measure up against the rub rail, grab from underneath, swing it up. Then if I can reach, I can loosen up one end of my shot cord. Now, from up here, I can grab and at least get a little bit of tension on that back. It's not gonna be finalized yet, but it'll give us enough tension to where we can tighten up the other end of our tarp. So as we move to this end of the tarp, what we're gonna wanna do is look up and use our seams as a reference to see how even we are. I can see that I need to come down quite a bit on this side from the back. And now I'm looking at the top and the bottom and I'm seeing that it looks pretty even. I'll measure that up against the other side. You can see from the other side, our, our seams are not at the same level on each side, but as long as they're level to the load, we can make it work. And obviously part of the, the struggle is our irregularly shaped load that we have to work with here. Okay, now what I can do is start working on pulling this side tight. Just give it a good tug from this direction. Go down to my tarp hook. <laughs> and now for this step, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure up where I need my fold to be. This D-ring's right at the rub rail. So I'm gonna use this as my center this is my center and then I'll count down. One, two, three, four. And then I have one, two above. Um, this is too low. I need it to be higher up so I can pull, get a better tighten on our tarps. Now that I've got it that high, give it a good tug on it. Go down to the tarp hook. Now I can do my count again from center. This is right on the rub rail. So this is my center. One, two, three. One, two, three. So I'll go to the third one down and then connect it to the third one up. And once I've got those connected, I can start pulling on it and it should even out the sides of my tarps for me. Go up to those other two, double it down, back to my tarp hook. And then for my last bite, I'll double these ones up. And now we'll repeat that process on the other side. All right, now we can start working on our sides. Because we've got this big drop, I'm gonna have to uh, use two different rows of D-rings. So I'm kind of measuring out from my rub rail to see where I need to start this top row. Seems to be about right here. So I'll move up to the top row at this point. 
and then I'll go ahead and start the process of doing the side right here from the back. I'll make a quick release knot for myself. Try to just get as even as a fold as I can. It's pretty tough when we've got this much of a drop, but just the best one we can get. Put this on this tarp hook, give it some tension, come back down to the same one. And then as I move along, I can kind of manipulate this extra. So as I get to each D-ring, I just go down to the nearest tarp hook with a loop through the rub rail. Now obviously we've got some wrinkle in here from our drop. We can come back through and make some fine adjustments as we go along. When I'm folding up, I, what I like to do is search for my rub rail. I can feel it right there. So I can kind of give it a pinch there. I know that's where it needs to land roughly. Try to even it out as I go along. And then I can end with this quick release knot on the D-ring. Now, we got two left, but since the rest of this is going to be covered by the front tarp, it's not as critical to get it tensioned down. Come back through and try to work some of these folds out as I can. And then we'll repeat the same on the other side. Okay, just like the back one, we're gonna toss our bungees off to the side, but keep an eye on them. Get my seam lined up with the front of the load in the center as much as possible. And walk it back. Now I'm just centering this up a little bit. Now, I wanna make sure I get all my, my shot cord to the ground. I'm a little off center, but again, I can make my final adjustments from the ground. But I'm gonna to want to loosen up the string on this top row here. Since I won't be using it, I need to move it down to the bottom. I wanna to try to get everything set up to where I can do everything else from the ground so I don't end up having to climb back up on the load. And so I'm gonna pull this out of a couple of rings so I can reach it from the bottom if I need to pull it. I don't want to throw my flap all the way down like I did on the back because on the front, this is the last step, but I wanna have enough overhanging to where I can grab it from the bottom. So I'll just fold in the middle and leave that hanging over just a little bit. Well, I can see I need to move over towards me just a little bit. Give it a little tug. Try to even out my corners at the top of this load. That's my goal. It's kind of the opposite of what we did at the back. Our first step on this one is gonna be the side flaps instead of the big flap. And the process is kind of the same. I'm gonna look at the rub rail and then hold that position with my hand and then from underneath, flip it over. 
just like that. Now that I've got it centered on the front pretty decent, I'm gonna look at these seams going down the side and I can tell I need to come this way quite a bit towards the back. Uh, right about there, it looks pretty good from this side. So now that I've got those evened out, I'll start doing my corner from the deck there. So kind of like the back, I'm gonna find the rub rail, I'm gonna hold that, and then fold up from the bottom to meet that point. And then I can kind of determine where my bottom needs to be. About there. So I see this D ring's my bottom. I can count up and double up from there. So I'll grab this very top one. And then I'll hook it onto the trailer itself to keep my hands free until I get this side flipped. Find the rub rail, grab at the bottom, flip it up, and then work it down to where just on the edge of the trailer there and then I'm able to hold some tension so now we've got the front done to where we're holding tension on it you can see the sides move inward the seam does obviously we've got a narrower load at the top than the bottom but that's okay not every load is going to be perfectly square in the real world, so you kind of have to adapt accordingly. But now that we've got this front cinched up with a little bit of tension, we can go to the back and get those tightened up. All right, just like the other tarp, we're going to get this side tightened up here and fold it up. I'm going to find my, my rub rail lands right on this D-ring. I've got one, two, three D-rings below it, one, two, three above it. So I'll go to the, the bottom one and then count from the center up, one, two, three, and mate them together and then pull it. And then as you can see down the side, that gets the tarp folded up in one smooth move. Just come back and grab some more D-rings. Finish it up, tighten it down. Then I get to my last one, I can make a quick release knot, put it down on a D-ring, and then stuff the excess up underneath the tarps under the load. Now we'll repeat on the other side. Since we're not gonna use this top row here, we'll go ahead and just pull this string out. And then we can save it for another time. Now that we've got our front and back tightened up and the tarp folded up, we can start working on going down the sides. So I'll start the same way with a quick release knot take this down to the closest tarp hook and then start my, working my way down. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. Just go down the length of the trailer We're gonna work on this front flap now. It's our last step. Again, I'm gonna bring it down to the bottom and see where I end right at this D-ring. 
and then use that as my center. And fold up from there. I don't know which ones to grab onto. I'll go back and grab a tarp hook, give it a little tension, and then come back and go through both of these ones to complete my fold. And then now I'll make a quick release knot and just tack it up on a tarp hook and get it started on the other side. Now, same thing on this side, try to find my center. This D-ring will do it. Fold up from there. I've got that one. Fell down on me, but I've identified which one I need to double up with that one. Come back and <laughs> grab one for tension. Go through this D-ring here. Up to this one. And then now some tension. And then of course this last one, we'll try to pull up underneath, create a little bit of a seal for the bottom there. Then I'll make a quick release knot, bring it back and put it on a tarp hook. Then my excess, now we're just gonna finish tightening up the other side of this front flap. Come back and grab these doubles, go down to the tarp hook. And then this bottom one can be a little tricky, but kind of just encourage it to Go up under the load, get yourself a little bit of a seal up underneath, and then a quick release knot to finish up. All right, so we talked about quick release knots. Make yourself a simple loop, just like that, and then bring your extra length and push it through the loop. And then grab onto the middle of that loop and pull tight and you got your knot. And then if you just pull on the end, it comes loose. Well, we finished tarping this load. Um, an important thing to keep in mind about the tarping process is every load is gonna be shaped different. There's gonna be different challenges that you run into. It's important to just develop yourself a process and use that process, process to execute each load that you do thereafter. Um, you know, I've showed you my method of getting it done on certain steps of the process. You can tweak those as you go along, but as long as you're good about getting every step and then having a way to complete each step, it's going to come out looking pretty good. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube page. I've included a link below on how to contact us. If you're looking for the next place to call home, it's Central Oregon Truck Company. We've been voted best fleets to drive for in North America nine years in a row. So click on the link below and we'll contact you today.